Well, our RSX is back from Williams Paint and Body, and let me tell you, it's been resurrected, all right? Join us for the unveiling, and a little bit later, we're going to take our JK Jeep, we're going to move it up four inches where the TerraFlex lift kit, and also the tires and wheel combo is going to add a little more. We're moving up in the world today on Tech Garage. Welcome to Tech Garage presented by Advance Auto Parts. Now, Brian, I'm so excited. We flip-flopped the whole show around to put the project RSX Resurrection right in the front because the unveiling, man. This thing looks like a new car. You remember that imagination, that vision? <laughs> yeah. Here it is. Yeah, it looks fantastic, I got to tell you. And I'm starting to get excited because the outside is looking almost as good as everything we've got going on underneath and out in the engine bay. That's for sure. Now, we're looking at it. It's pretty good. Well, what about our audience? Let's show them. Three, two, one. Man, that thing is gorgeous. Look at that. It really is. Now, I'll tell you what. Eddie Williams did a phenomenal job. And you know what you can tell? You remember before it was smashed, the fender, the mirror was falling off the whole nine yards? I'll tell you, listen to this. No effort whatsoever. That's quality. Well Doors done. lined up. Absolutely perfect. Our carbon fiber mirrors. I remember in show one, I touched it, it fell off. We needed a new one. Well, there it is. The body lines on the hood. The Corvette orange popping on this vehicle. And really, the icing on the cake, along with lowering it with the e -bock. you can see here the actual wheels. WheelPro sent us these Motegis, track light rims, and wrapped them in Nitto tires. That bronze mat really sets it off, man. I'm telling you, Williams hit a home run with this one. Sure did. I love the carbon fiber mirrors. That's a great finishing touch. Now, the temptation at this point for any of us might be to take good and make it even better. Like add some wax and buff it out and really enjoy it for the weekend, but resist that temptation. You need to wait at least 30 days so the paint can breathe. There's vapors and gases that need to evacuate and come up out of the paint, and if you've got wax on it, you've sealed it in. You don't want that to turn into damage later on. So, Wait your turn on that, but there are the you got to use the right products that take care of this paint now and forever. So to help us understand that, John's over at the table with some great Meguiar's product. Now Brian was exactly right. We're going to ship our RSX back to Williams Paint and Body, where they're going to take some thousand grit sandpaper and some five thousand grit sandpaper and wet sand it. You know, then they can go ahead and buff it with some Meguiar's. We'll be ready to wax it then. But Brian, the wax technology, I mean, it's come as far as the technology in the cars. I mean, just to wash a car, there's four or five steps here. There's a technique to this stuff. There's absolutely a lot to consider. You know, it really begins and ends with climate. Where do you live? Is it hot? Is it extremely cold? What are those extremes, which really ought to drive your decisions around what type of wash, what type of wax ultimately you're going to use. Because we all want this paint to last a long time and look good in the process. And you know what? We got to spend some time with Meguiar's a while back, and one of the coolest things I've ever seen was this clay bar. I've been needing it for you. Yeah. But man, it looks like it's clean. It looks like there's no contaminants, but this really will tell the story. It's amazing. You got to have the paint surface clean, and we did that with some good Meguiar's wash to get it ready. We didn't wash the whole fender because I want you to be able to see the difference. The clay bar comes in a kit couldn't be easier, four or five steps to follow. Once this is clean, you apply the detailer, and what this is gonna do is take the contaminants off the top layer beyond the paint, out on that clear coat and out on top of that. So, I like to knead it into a square and then work it, just gently work it, and then you can stretch it. Right there, you can see you've got dirt coming off. That's with three passes with a clay bar. So, ultimately, we would do the whole fender, and you could fold it over, knead it a little bit more, and just keep working it. You want to keep it lubricated. And then, perhaps the most important part, John, a lot of people forget about, is you got to have the right application. You got to have the right towels to dry it. And, yep, you can see it cleaning up right there. We're getting better luster already. So. And with the technology today in the paints and the clear coats, I mean, yeah. the swirls, the scratches, you know, waxing the wrong way can actually put swirls and scratches into the paint. This is going to take care of all that, get the contaminants off, give you that real base where you can put some nice wax on. Now, what about waxing? You got some tips for that? Yeah, I'll tell you what, again, there's so much engineering that goes into the chemicals that they provide these days. So does the engineering apply in the applicator itself. So you got to put wax on with the right stuff. If you're using Meguiar's, use their applicator. 
Again, these are designed to work together. Same thing with removing it. Microfiber is the way to go. You can get a nice buff, a nice finish there. And I tell you what, you can make just about any paint job come back to life and the vehicle look really good. That's for sure. We're going to get some nice Meguiar's Carnuba wax on our car, but you know, I can't leave it there. I got to go with the interior, the tire shine. We're going to make it look good when it comes back from Eddie's. We'll be right back with more Tech Garage presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Tech Garage, presented by Advance Auto Parts, is being brought to you by MagnaFlow. We've got the power and sound you're looking for. Dustless Blasting, it's the future of surface preparation. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM Fit Radio since 1977. And by Advance Auto Parts, let's get you back on the road. Welcome back to Tech Garage presented by Advance Auto Parts. Well, we got our JKG up and we got it in process. And I have to tell you, it's a pretty big process. But you know, we rolled it in stock. It was looking pretty good. I mean, it's a Jeep, nothing wrong with it. Had some aftermarket wheels in. We got it into the shop, but it's our style. We got to get this thing up four inches and TerraFlex is going to do just that. But you know, it's a Jeep, great platform, Brian. It Why really is. I'll tell you what, it's one of the most engineered platforms out there. We could have put a lift on just about any vehicle, but with the Jeep, we've got a great foundation there's tremendous potential and I tell you what by now everybody has seen how you install various lift kits your various choices there's a lot to consider and one thing we loved about the TerraFlex kit that John got us is there's so much information so much knowledge and so much engineering into these parts you'll see how that shows up on our Beastie Jeep now engineer is the key word I mean it's all about alignments and geometry of the vehicle mm -hmm. if you just lift one up I mean there's setback from the front rear wheels there's caster there's camber it's not going to be right with this kit it's going to be right and I really really like that fact that you found from TerraFlex. <laughs> yeah. That's the reason why I'll we're using this. I'll tell you what, this. what they taught us was for every 10,000 miles on the road with these types of rigs we build for weekend off-roading, for every 10,000 miles on the road, we average about 10 miles on the trail. So there's so much to consider here. And John talked about caster. Pinion angles, the other thing, you gotta do your homework there. Here's what caster is. If this is the front wheel of your rig, this is the back wheel, and you put a lift in it, in this case four inches, Look what happens to the wheels. The axles actually travel in, so we've got to get that caster back, not just so the wheel looks good in the center of the fender, but so that it drives down the road properly and we don't introduce the death wobble on And that's Jeep. what this kit does. It yeah. absolutely does. Let's start over here with the track rod. Now, this is a piece of spaghetti <laughs> compared to what's up there. I mean, take a look, look at that at thing. I mean, just the diameter alone, the weight's nothing, comparatively speaking. We've got adjustability in the new TerraFlex kit you've got on here and we've got swivels right down in here. So again, we have articulation, not just travel. Articulation, and we're keeping that axle in the right position. Sure. Springs, now springs control ride height. Check a look at this. Here's my old spring, and here's my new spring. You see a big difference in the height, and also the diameter, along with the variable rate spring. This thing's gonna ride nice, but it's gonna keep the geometry right. Yep. Our control arms, oh my goodness. Here's the <laughs> stamp piece right here. This thing here, if I pick this up, man, it almost takes two arms to curl. This might work out. Yeah, that's a good workout yeah, right that there. Is. And is beefy. The Zerk fittings, you, get, you can't underestimate the value of Zerk fittings. You're going to have this thing off-road, swampy, muddy conditions, rocks, everything else. Zerk fittings are huge, as well as look at the swivels in here at every link point. Again, articulation, not just travel. That's what TerraFlex has engineered into it. Keeping that geometry right. Upper control arm, same thing. Beefy, got the swivels instead of this little guy here. And then just as importantly are the shock absorbers. Now you got your TerraFlex shock absorbers up there yeah. halfway mounted, but it's key, they're a lot longer. So there's some valving inside of the shock absorber here, and you can see the valving. Now what that does, it controls the spring oscillations. The springs control the ride height. So it has to be in the right place for it to work proper. This set does that, it works proper. And you gotta get the right shocks, especially with this much lift. I've been that guy, I hate to admit it. Tried to take the cheap way out, factory shocks don't last very long at all so you want to have a great setup like we do now we put a lot of work into this one hey let's see how far we come now one of the first things we had to do was get our chief tech chase over here with his torches and fire it up and cut off some brackets the factory brackets and you can see what he did right here he actually cut this bracket off this is the factory bracket and what that did it allowed the control arm to go by without hitting it and then we had to cut another one off right behind it now when we did that he took his welder out and he went ahead and welded all the way around made sure it was secure now that was real easy because it positioned right in place TerraFlex built it in to where the bolt goes in and it's in place so your alignment giant 
geometry angles are going to be right. Then what's left then is we had to come over here and put some parts on. And you can see them right here, starting with the brake hose. Now we had to extend that due to the lift, four inches. We don't want that overstressed. It's got a nice braided line on here, so you're going to get a brake feel that's really, really good. No expansion, even with the extra length. You can see the shock absorber here. We talked about that earlier in the valving. That four inches gives you a huge lift right here, and then the valving's in the right place as well. Then what we did is we went ahead and put our bump stops in up here, and then Brian's going to have to put the bump stop on the bottom, and we ended up with our track rod and our sway bar. Now, I really like the sway bar because it disconnects from here, and you can put it up there. So why? Well, we're not using it. I know the owner to this car, and he's going to go off-roading with this thing, and he's probably going to want to disconnect it for some rock climbing. Now, all that engineering went into this kit in the rear as well. I'm going to get a demo set up over on the table to show you how to lift some vehicles, but Brian's back there right now looking at some of that engineering and Brian, the geometry angles are key back there as well. Absolutely. There's a lot of work that's been done. We've told you that. We've got the lower control arm in back here, the upper control arm in. Now, a couple things. We had to relocate a bracket very similarly to what we had to do up front. This bracket was originally way back up here, and we had to replace it with a new bracket right here. Now, this has all been MIG welded. John talked about that. We ground it down, got the surfaces clean. That's key if you're going to get a good weld in. You want a good weld in because it's got a heck of a load on it. So here on the lower control arm, you can see the bridge in this design. That's additional strength. Same with the semi-round design up here that TerraFlex engineered into the upper control arm. So upper and lower control arms are in. We've got our new spring in back here. We talked about the variable rate of the springs. You're going to see why that matters more up front in a second. We've got our sway bar connect. We've got our new shock in, new brake line, all set back up. Everything's been torqued. Can't stress, follow directions, follow the YouTube link from TerraFlex. It's easy to do. So be sure you got the right tools for the job. A little time, a little patience, and follow the step-by-step. -step. More to come with this beastie upgrade on our JK on Tech Garage, presented by Advanced Auto Parts, after the break. Well, welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Well, with the incredibly relevant help of my friend, the transmission jack, I'm able to support this front axle and get this final point in the vehicle all buttoned up. The new spring is tall. We told you about that. So with the transmission jack, I'm able to support it and then back it down to where I need it so I'm not fighting this coil spring too awfully bad. We got the shock disconnected, the tie rod disconnected, everything's floating, the control arms aren't connected yet so that I can work with this and not fight it too awfully bad. So, here's a bump stop that came with the TerraFlex kit. They give you great directions on where to drill right here at the seat of the spring. It's got a self-tapping bolt and you put the bump stop in, it'll make contact here when you're off-road and you're really articulating a lot. Here's a tip, put it in from the bottom, work it right up in here, you can't get it in after the fact. And now, you gotta index that spring but with a little bit of encouragement, it's going to spin right around. We're indexed right at the top. She sets right down in. And we're good. I'm going to jack it up and support it. And we're on our way. Really coming together nicely. So I'm going to get the shock reconnected, get the tie rod reconnected, both control arms buttoned up. We're almost there. Now, this is the cream of the crop for suspension lift kits, the TerraFlex Elite 4 inch lift, but there's a lot of ways to lift your vehicle. John's got more about that. Now there are different ways to lift a truck and or lower a truck. If you have a short long arm suspension system, you can put a spring in there. Bigger spring lifts it up. Shorter spring lowers it down. You can drop a spindle, that'll change it as well. If you have a strut suspension system like this one behind us, you can get a bigger strut or a smaller strut. This is pretty cool. Rancho actually has a leveling strut. Well, what's that all about? The new Chevy trucks. They're up in the back, put this one in the front, be perfectly level. Great product, great way to raise the front of a Chevy truck or GMC. Brian, how's it coming over there? All right, the last couple turns here on the bump stop. Remember, this was a self-threading bolt. Want to pull it down, get it snug. No need to over-tighten and break anything. One final inspection. The spring is sitting exactly where it's supposed to be. It's indexed. I got the tie rod connected back up. It's torqued down. We're finally ready for some control arms. Now, this is where the TerraFlex engineering really shows up. So, the top upper control arm here calls for 27 and 3 quarters from center to center of that bracket. That's how long that bar's gotta be. So, with the tape, we got really, really close. I put it up there, set the bolt in, lined right up, drifted right in. 
Similarly, down here on the bottom, here's this beastie lower control arm. The Zerk fitting's down here where we'll have access to it once it's mounted. There's a second hole up here, depending on your application, that you could put it. But there's a plug in there, so no contamination is going to get down in there. Just good design. Love it. All the way through and through. So this calls for 33 and 9 16 Again, I pre-measured it. Let's see how close we are. Roll it up in. Get the mounting bolt right here. Give this axle a little encouragement with a little lean. And she goes right in. So I'll keep buttoning this up. I'll get it torqued down. One final thing I want to show you. I've been talking about great engineering this whole time. Here's the sway bar link. I've got it rotated up. Remember, John showed you how it disconnects and slides up. Well, I think for our test drive, we're going to leave this off. We roll it up, get past that mount. This slides right on. You put a little safety pin through there, just like on your Reese trailer hitch, and you're good to go. You're safe for off-road. So we're finally done. All four corners buttoned up. Going to go retorque everything. We're ready for those nasty rugged ridge wheels. I can't wait to get this thing on the trail. Now. Torque specs are everything, especially as it relates to wheels. John's got more. Well, when putting your wheel on, there's really only two options to torque in your lug nuts. You can do it like Brian did with a torque wrench, set it to a specific torque, pull down on it till it clicks, and you're there. You can also use these torque limiting adapters, and in our industry, we call them torque sticks. And you can see two of them right here. They're like giant torsion bars, and what happens, you can go ahead and use your impact gun, put them in here, and you can hit them. And when you hit them, it's going to flex. You can see this one's a lot thinner than this one. Well, this one's going to flex a lot quicker than this one will, so this torque here is going to be a lot less than that one would when you're putting it together. Also, check out this graphic. It's important that you use the right sequence depending on your lug pattern. Go in a star pattern across from side to side to side and make sure you torque it equally and look up your specification. That's critical. Well, I hear Brian's torque wrench clicking away and the Jeep sitting high. Looks good. Look at those nasty rims with the bead lockers and the BF Goodrich all terrains. This thing really is a beast. The JK is no joke anymore, and there's so much capability underneath, I feel really good about it. Well, one final lug nut to torque. All right, so we've torqued and retorqued all the way around. This thing's looking awesome. I don't know about you, but I love it. I love it too, yeah, the work was worth it. Look at it, I mean, it pays off. But you know, it only makes sense at this point. You know, Warren sent us this beautiful bumper right oh, yeah, here. That's awesome. You see the actual custom work right there yeah, that Eddie awesome. Williams did, phenomenal. But you know what, it's gonna house even more importantly this new VR12, yep. but the key here is VR12S. S is for synthetic, and it's synthetic rope in here, 3 8 diameter, 90 feet of that rope. You're not gonna have a problem with this joker. You can do anything you wanna do. And I'll tell you what, there's actually better tensile strength and better kinetic pulls with a synthetic spool like that, less wear and tear on the drum and the bearings. It's a win-win. It's an awesome winch. Yep. I'm going to head over to Bernie's. We're going to check them out at the speed shop. We'll be back with more Tech Garage right after the break. Brian, we need to get this joker in. Let's do it. Tech Garage presented by Advance Auto Parts is being brought to you by Flexalite, still making it in the USA. Steel rubber products, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. Clamp tight, the clamp making tool. And by Advance Auto Parts, let's get you back on the road. Welcome back to Tech Garage presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Now we unveiled our Acura today and it took a lot of prep to get to that point. So today's performance playbook is all about preparation. Josh, this thing's meticulous, it's ready to go. You put a lot of prep into it in the off season. What do you actually have to do? We go through an entire recertification process. Which entails what? Um, sending multiple parts to multiple vendors um, to get their stamp of approval to make sure it's okay to use it in the future season. Parts like what parts have to get certified? Everything from our valve cover restraints to clutch can, uh, lower containment blankets. All that has to be certified to actually run the car? Yes, sir. Very cool. Now the body looks awesome too. Our RSX looks good. This looks just as well. What do you do for the body and just prep? Believe it or not, it's just McGuire's quick detail. I do believe it. It looks really, really well. <laughs> also the parts. There's maintenance and prep involved with that. Is there a life cycle on parts? 
Yep, we usually freshen up the heads. Um, there is a run cycle on connecting rods and pistons, so all that's changed. Well, speaking of prep, Drew's got a Mustang out there. He's putting some airbags, and it took a lot of prep to get to that point. Let's check in with him. This is our 2015 Mustang, came in for a air ride suspension. Removed all the factory components, factory struts, the factory coils, replaced them with a bellow type air strut in the front and a bellow type bag in the back. It has a storage tank in the back to hold all the air. You have a, set, you have a valving system that actually puts the air to each corner for the air ride. You have a compressor that fills the tank. It goes through the car. It has self-leveling sensors on it, so when you start the car, it'll actually come up, go down all by itself. You have air stored in the tank, and you have empty bags. You hit a switch and activate the solenoids, transfer the air from the tank to whatever airbag that you push the button for. This is just pretty much a cool factor, and it rides excellent. That's this week's performance playbook. Back to Tech Garage for the email question of the week. John Brendan from Atlanta, Georgia emailed this week. He's got a 2010 Lincoln Town Car that's sagging in the rear. It's kind of famous on that car. He was told it was going to cost more than $1,000 to fix it due to that air ride system. What are your thoughts? Well, Brandon, that's about right. In that car, you have an actual air ride system or an air bag, a couple of them to be exact. And these things are located in the back, and that's what actually supports the Lincoln for the ride height. Man, you have some level sensors, you have some air lines that are going all the way up to a pump, a dryer to keep the air dry, and you got an electric motor up front or somewhere on the car pumping the air into these to keep these level. So it's a pretty complex system. That sounds like a pretty good estimate to me replace the whole system and or you got some options. You do, you know, they call it a delete kit. You can put a conversion kit on those now. It's a lot less expensive than that, uh, probably around half the price, but you can go back to a traditional coil spring setup. In that kit, the shock mounts come because you're going to have to add shocks as well. So, you know what, if you're feeling energetic and got the right tools in your driveway, you can tackle this. Yeah, the delete kit or keep it factory, stick with your airbags. Now our JK, <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, it is a Jeep for the decades. Absolutely. Love the amount of engineering that went into the design of that. We got the right kit from TerraFlex. We can do anything we want with that Jeep. I'll tell you what, we're about out of time for today, Brian. We are. Come see us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Yep, and thanks for watching Tech Garage, where we get you back on the road. Production assistance for Tech Garage is provided by Chipola College, located in Mariana, Florida. Founded in 1947, Chipola was recently ranked as one of the top three community colleges in the United States.